Alright guys, welcome to the Michael Game Show. This is your host PGT and we got 90 second mycology as well. Good evening everybody. It is episode four. That's right, episode four of the Michael Game Show on 7 11 2023. We have a special contestant tonight. Some of you may know him as Gary. Others may know him as Fresh from the Farm Fungi. So Gary, welcome to the show tonight. This is going to be awesome. Thanks for having me on. I'm very excited. And, you know, I've been a big, big fan of both of you guys for a long time. So I appreciate you having me on. And I'm uh, I'm here to learn as well. So just, uh, yeah, do my best. All right. I'm glad to have you on, Gary. It's it's uh, quite a pleasure here to, to be working with you. Uh, I, I've actually watched quite a few of your videos as I started off my mycology journey. So I definitely appreciate all the content that you put out there on YouTube as well. Yeah, uh, with how we'd like to start off here is we'd like to introduce the guests and uh, learn a little bit more about the guests, what got you into mycology, and you know, what's, what's your story like, Gary? Yeah, so I guess my, uh, my background is in medical technology, so that's what I went to school for um, professionally, and um, after I graduated, my wife and I, we took a road trip across the country in a Jeep Wrangler, and uh, we ended up here in Colorado. So I worked at a few different labs um, about 10 years ago, and I've always been like an avid gardener. So one time I, I tried growing some mushrooms in my garden, and I bought um, these little seed packets off of Amazon. And they were maybe like like a half an ounce of dried up oats and maybe it had mycelium, but it was probably about eight years ago and I planted it in some potting soil and I waited and waited um, in like a little coat. And then eventually I started to see some white, um, what I thought was mycelium starting to emerge. And in like three days, the whole entire thing was trichoderma. So um, <laughs> that was my first experience with mycology. And ever since then, like I caught the itch. Um, so I went out and, you know, I, I bought some uh, Paul Stamets books. And then I looked, started researching. I got into the shroomery and I really just it started as a hobby, just um, growing mushrooms in my garden. And my wife, one day she found uh, uh, ad on Craigslist where someone in, in Lakewood they had a grow kit that they just left on their porch and they're like uh, yeah this is a mushroom grow kit I don't know what I'm doing but someone please get this so um, I went over and I grabbed that bag it was a brown oyster mushroom and I set it up in an old like weed grow tent that I had in my basement and about seven or eight days later, it started pinning, and I got this massive flush of oyster mushrooms. So that was like my first taste of success, and that was still an oyster mushroom that I, I grew today. So I cloned that mushroom, and slowly I gathered more and more strains. Um, and then my, my dad's friend in Niagara Falls, um, her husband had been growing mushrooms for about a decade at that point. And uh, my dad connected me with him. So I'm originally from Buffalo, New York, and he's growing mushrooms in Niagara Falls. So shout out to Anthony DeFranco. And he, you know, him and I, we would talk almost every day on the phone about what I was doing wrong and how to get, you know, pins to form and of all about CO2. So that was kind of my mentor in mushroom farming. And it took me about, six or eight months to really get a steady um you know harvest every week and at that time i had quit my uh, my corporate job and i knew i wanted to start a business i just wasn't really sure what but over the years i collected all this lab equipment 
and I have like a, a pretty good operation just in my basement in Denver. And I posted an ad on Craigslist about six months into you know this whole journey. And um, it was for some lion's mane mushrooms. So I, I'd grown maybe like 10 pounds of lion's mane. And my wife and I, we were just uh, eating lion's mane consistently for like a whole <laughs> week. And, and I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna post an ad on Craigslist because I can't eat another bite of this. Um, even though I love lion's mane, it just, uh, it was a lot. <laughs> so, so I ended up, um, two days later, some guy from Lakewood rode his bike all the way to my house in Denver and he bought all the lion's mane I had. And, um, I just remember him, you know, I handed him a bag, like a grocery bag and he reached in and bit it like an apple. And I was like, Oh, you're supposed to cook that. But he was like really into it. And that was kind of my aha moment where I knew that there was, you know, a business or a market for what I was doing. And, you know, I guess it, it was kind of lucky that this lady named Christina Welch, she was opening up a, a little grocery shop in West, or uh, it was in Wheat Ridge. And they were looking for local farmers to like uh, do like a co-op. And she saw my ad on Craigslist and she's like, hey, do you want to sell your mushrooms at our market? I'm like, okay, well, what do I have to do? And then she kind of coached me into, you know, doing my, my weekly uh, deliveries there and it was all refrigerated and it was all licensed and stuff. So that was kind of like a step up on my Craigslist, uh, my Craigslist days. But um, after that, um, that led into a farmer's market here in Denver, which we still vend at, uh, Cherry Creek Farmer's Market, it's downtown Denver. And um, uh, we've been doing that. This is our sixth year. So we're doing that one, and then we're doing one in Castle Rock, which is right behind me here. We just finished uh, building out 1,500 square foot lawn set, which I'm growing, I'm fruiting my mushrooms, and then I've got my lab over here in a separate building. And then um, we're also doing a crop share program called Grow Girls in, or in uh, Arvada. And then we sell wholesale mushrooms on Friday. So if you're ever in Denver and you want to grab some of our fresh mushrooms, we're at the Cherry Creek Farmer's Market or Castle Rock or just email me. Um, but kind of my long-term vision for this whole thing is to create mushroom mecca or like just a place for people to come and you know learn how to grow mushrooms and if I, my plan is to get you know some some domes or yurts or something and just hold week-long classes like training um, and that's kind of my vision and along the way I found a passion of teaching people how to grow mushrooms and uh you know, I started off doing YouTube videos a long time ago. I, I filmed like snowboard videos with my friends. And then uh, one day I did, I actually did like a MasterChef entry video and it got a few views on YouTube. And I just started filming um, my grow setup in Denver. And then it was mostly at the beginning, just recording. Like I wanted to be able to look back 10 years from now and be like okay this is what my setup looked like and then slowly you know morphed into helping people answer questions and you know making these uh, these trial videos i really like doing like uh, scientific experiments and comparing methodologies to figure out the best way to grow mushrooms and that's my passion so um all of those things aligned into what it is today and here I am in Sedalia, Colorado, so it's 30 minutes south of Denver, and we just moved here Friday from Denver, so it's been an 18-month-long process of, you know, we had a tenant here that um, he was living in the house for a while, but we were still building our building, and then um, we were growing our mushrooms in Denver, and then slowly we were growing them here and commuting, and now, since last week, we are finally living at our mush mushroom farm here in Sedalia. So I'm uh, really, really grateful for that. And I apologize if my mic is uh, cutting out, but just, uh, 
keeps cutting out for some reason. Oh so yeah, check. Just... So go ahead and check your input. But I always love. Yeah. So I've heard. I've heard your story before. I love the part where the guy can't, comes on his bike and he bites the lines oh. like an apple. <laughs> oh my god, that was like a man. Um, how's the how's the mic? But yeah, that that was a definitely a life changing moment. Mic is good right now. Yeah, much better right, right now. Yeah, now, did you say earlier you're still trying to sell your house, or you got it sold? We got it sold. Oh, yeah, okay. So we, we sold it, and then we've been moving here ever since then, and uh, finally we're we're in one spit. Uh, we're all settled in. I should say that. Glad to hear that. It's, that's quite the journey that you went through with the whole mycology thing. Uh, where do you see yourself, you know, in the future in terms of mycology? Like, what do you think the future holds in store for you? Um, so I'm, you know, in in this for the long run. So my dream is just to continue to grow mushrooms for the community here in Denver and then um, keep producing YouTube videos and I'm working on a second book right now. I did an ebook called uh, Growing Gourmet Mushrooms for Market. And if anyone's interested, it's pretty much a how-to guide on how to set up a, a mushroom farm for your community. Um, and it's an ebook with a bunch of links, to different videos and products that I use. But that was kind of like my test of like, how do I, you know, form my ideas on the paper and now I'm creating a book about advanced mycology techniques so um, you know it's it's a long-term project but that's kind of my uh, you know five-year goal is to write this book and just keep growing mushrooms keep breeding mushrooms and then maybe in the, the farther out future I'm um, just growing our property into like a, like a mushroom community and just a place where people can come visit and you know maybe we'll have some uh some mushroom chefs come out and cook different meals or maybe someday we'll do like a, a mushroom themed wedding venue or something but i'm um, just continuing to to build my property into mushroom mecca that is kind of my long-term vision so we had no chance one two three four asked any links to this book gary so i just let them know in the chat that you do have the ebook on your etsy shop yes so it's on our etsy um and yeah it should be you know if you search uh growing gourmet mushrooms market on etsy it'll pop up but um yeah, go check that out if you're interested in starting your own mushroom farm you know my advice is just uh start small and then just build on your successes uh, i see a lot of people that will get a bunch of investment money and start these massive mushroom farms and it's really hard to find clients with the amount of mushrooms that the, that you know it takes to uh to distribute um so that's kind of my tip is start small and just build on your successes and that's what I've done. And um, I think that there's definitely a niche market for gourmet mushrooms. And it's kind of like a, a decentralized movement because they're so sensitive and they have such a short shelf life that it's hard to distribute in a far region. So um, I feel like, you know, small mushroom farms are gonna be the backbone of mushroom growing um, for a long time until people can figure out how to distribute them better but um yeah i just love doing it and i love doing the farmers markets and meeting our customers week after week it's, it's a rewarding way to contribute to your community i think that's great how a lot of people, they get so overzealous, even with the Uncle Ben tech, where they're like, you know, it's my first time, so I'm going to inoculate 90 bags of rice. But like with your story, <laughs> I like how you just ended up with too much lion's mane, so you just took it to Craigslist, you know, the OG place to go sell stuff. It's like, hey, I've got all these extra mushrooms. And a lot of people always wonder, they want to jump into contacting restaurants right away and all this, starting to set up accounts. And it's like, you just have to start that first small step first, like a farmer's market or even Craigslist, and then see where it goes from there. 
absolutely. And um, find, find a good mentor too. So I get a lot of emails. I try to answer as many as I can. But um, finding someone who's in your local area is a, is a really uh, important thing too. And me as like, I, I don't even consider myself a large scale mushroom farm, but I like to, you know, talk to people at the farmer's market every week and just, uh, you know, try to just be a part of the community, I would say, and not just um, expect people to support you without, you know, it's whatever you put out is what you get back is what I would say. So George in the chat said, Gary, does your book tell you how to grow specific mushrooms or is it very broad? It's pretty broad, um, but there are some, you know, bits and pieces like tips and tricks on the different uh, pinning techniques or I would say groups of mushrooms. So there's like uh, top pinning mushrooms like Piapino, chestnut, beech mushrooms. And then there is like side pinning or side fruiting like oyster mushrooms, lion's mane, um, different like uh, reishi or retail. So it kind of groups mushrooms in general categories, not actually like individually specific mushrooms. Um, but if you ever have any questions, like I said, email me or you know, comment on one of my YouTube videos and I try my best to answer them all. If you send me like more than four paragraphs, I'm not going to read it, but if it's like, <laughs> if it's like a couple sentences, I'll, I'll, uh, email it back. Yeah. yeah. Keep it short and simple. Hey Gary, yeah. uh, your microphone's doing the, the staticky thing all right. again. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to set a timer on my watch again. Yeah. We aren't sure why Gary's computer keeps kicking back and forth between the, uh, his, his nice podcaster microphone and the computer microphone. It's very weird. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. But it's all right. Like we always say, we do it live. I'm going to add Gary's book into the description of this video right now as we speak. So in the description, you'll see it says Gary's links. And then I'm going to put Gary's book. Yeah, thanks for doing that. And, hopefully and I think, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Check it out. All right, updated now. Should be there if everybody refreshes the stream. <clears throat> All right, how you feeling, Gary? You want to get this game rolling here? Absolutely. All right, I'm glad, excited. Glad to hear your mic's all fixed again. <laughs> right, I'm doing a, a five-minute timer. I'll toggle them. So that's, I mean, that's we can let I'll you do. know if it starts doing the funny noise again. But uh, all right, yeah, it's, it's just it's just much better when it's when it's working well. It wouldn't be a fun game show without technology interrupting. Like usually, something happens to one of us. Not a big deal. All right, all right. We'll get started with the game show here. Thank you for letting us uh, get a little peek into what it's like on the gourmet mushroom cultivation side of things. It's a very interesting uh, world to explore for sure, and it's very rewarding in the same sense. But... Um, so yeah, we're going to put your, your mycology knowledge to the test against the game show and see how you do. So we'll go ahead and uh, get started here. Alright, so this is a quick disclaimer for everybody. The Michael Game Show is for entertainment purposes only. All the questions and answers have been researched and reconfirmed by the production team before the show. Audience should not rely on the information presented in the show. Please use your own judgment and do your own research. The Michael Game Show is not responsible for your actions. That's because, remember, that common sense will almost always prevail. Yes. So the stream features materials as protected by the fair use guidelines. Um, so all rights reserved to their copyright owners. All right. So for this here, for the set of prizes, we kind of did this thing, um, this kind of idea, just kind of like an IOU thing came from uh, a movie. I don't know, my, my wife kind of helped create this. So just kind of think of it as uh, this is kind of how the tier works in this case. Um, usually we start off with tier one, we move up to tier two, tier three, and tier four. The questions get harder as we progress in the tiers. Um, so we'll let you get a first start here uh, on tier one. You get to pick between one cent question, a five cent question, and a ten cent question. <laughs> right. 
Um, let's do a tier one, ten cents. Right. All right, ten cents. Which of the following content creators has recently <laughs> achieved a milestone of ten thousand followers on Instagram? Is it A. Freshman of Farm Fun Guy, B. Ninety Second Mycology, C. Billy Golden Teacher, or D. Mr. Beast? <laughs> this is so obscure. <laughs> yeah, I I would say everyone, but um, oh. Uh, Uh, well, everyone's not on the on the list of options here. Nah, you gotta pick um, one, Gary. Okay. Yeah. So let's do. Uh, I know how, what's uh, recently. So I would go. I know that I definitely have that many, but um, I'm gonna go a fresh from the farm fun guy. It's actually 90 second mycology. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you missed that post. So I posted recently where my Instagram account hit 10,000 followers. And it's in this world with the content that we're creating with mushrooms, people are losing their accounts left and right. Their YouTube channels are getting striked. And it's just, you never know what, who, who's going to get hit, what's going to get hit. So it's pretty much a pretty good uh, milestone to hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. Congrats. I thought you had like a hundred thousand. No, no, not nowhere close. I think I just oh. hit what 72k on, on YouTube, but <clears throat> yeah, so now you, did you do anything to celebrate it? Uh, nothing fancy. I just kept my head low. You know, I didn't want Instagram to see what was going on so that they just suddenly delete my account after hitting 10,000. So kept a low profile and just kept on trucking along with the mushroom content because i like to remind people that for me i don't do it full time right now I, I work a lot full time so that's why i don't always post i don't always have videos going on so i've got a lot of time going into the patreon right now and yeah i know gary this was an obscure question we just kind of threw it in because it was silly so nothing to worry about <laughs> yeah yeah it's just kind of a fun thing so to talk about 90 reaching his 10k followers so just want to congratulate him for, for that all right so two them. yeah tier one two more all right let's do uh i'm gonna go easier than <laughs> tier two 25 or 25 cents uh, we're still sticking with the tier one for now once you complete tier all one, right we'll move let's up go uh, one one cent then very little risk all right, uh, question here. What country produces the most mushrooms in the world? Is it A, USA, B, Italy, C, China, or D, Mushroom Kingdom? I'm gonna go with C, China, just because they've been doing it the longest and they got everything dialed in. C is correct. All right. Yes. Well, that was a little I bit of a that. trick question. People who were uh, people who watched the last episode, what was our question? It was about fresh mushrooms or something. Yeah. Um, and it was Poland was the number one place that produces the fresh mushrooms. And this one is just mushrooms in general because Asia will produce dried mushroom packets. You know, they've got the umami flavoring, uh, dried woodier stuff. So China is overall mushrooms and Poland is number one fresh mushrooms. Very cool. Hey, Gary, your microphone's doing the fuzzy thing again. Alright, how's that? Much better. Not sure why oh, yeah. it does that. Tip of the Cat I've... Mushrooms has a good point. He said, so produces, question mark, naturally, or farming? I think it's farming. Yeah, there's a lot of farming going on in China for sure. Especially with all that land they got. Yeah. Alright, we'll go with the five cent questions. The last one for the tier one. Uh, what is the name of the type of fungi that grows in a circular pattern forming a ring or arc of mushrooms? Is it A, fairy ring? B, 
B, toadstool rings, C, mushroom circles, or D, hula hoop fungi? <laughs> it's a pretty dope picture, but I'm gonna guess, say A, fairy ring. A, fairy ring is correct. Here's a fun fact. In the article, what is a fairy ring and what causes them by Hannah Victor from Woodland Trust. Fairy rings are also known as elf rings or pixie rings. And in the English and Celtic folklore, fairy rings were caused by fairies or elves dancing in a circle. And if humans joined in the dance, they would be punished by the fairies and made to dance in a ring until they passed out from exhaustion. Another folklore story is that you should never step into a fairy ring as you may become invisible or become trapped there forever. And with me being in Florida, it's really crazy to see these things pop up in random fields. Because you can see pictures online, but then once you actually see them, it's like, how did that happen? Yeah, so here in Denver, if anyone ever has been to uh, Cheeseman Park in downtown Denver, after a rainstorm go there, there's a bunch of fairy rings. And someone once told me that it was an old graveyard. So I don't know if it has something to do with, like, uh, spirits or anything but it was an interesting uh, comment I got at, at the farmer's market once yep. have you ever come across fairy rings in person yes um, usually in my opinion it's from like a like a downed uh, cottonwood tree or something and like the roots of the mushrooms or the roots of the old tree are still supporting the mycelium. So then it kind of had like a, a ring shape. Um, but that's just my personal experience. I haven't honestly, you know, researched it a lot, but I was, you know, now I've got the itch. I'm gonna have to look it up more. Well, that's pretty awesome. I haven't come across any fairy rings yet. Gotta go out more looking for them, but I have seen lots of pictures of them. It's always nice when people share that kind of thing. It's kind of like one of those rare events that happen, kind of like a double rainbow kind of like thing. I'm usually driving when I see them, so I can't like whip out my phone and get a picture either, because I'm just, I'm like, oh, there it is. Oh, did we lose your 90? Oh no, am I going in and out again? I've been having internet problems today. Um, I've got Spectrum and internet because they monopolize every every block in the world and I've been getting uh, outages all day so shout out to Easy Blue Thumb for tipping us five dollars thank you so much for your support Easy Blue Thumb awesome yeah uh, Easy Blue Thumb asked how to donate we have a reminder that comes up in the chat every now and then but you can go into the description of the video and it's the very first link streamlabs.com slash show slash tip so since our the YouTube channel is not monetized yet, you're able to help donate through the Streamlabs donation link right there. And of course, you get a real-time shout-out as well on screen. All right, Gary, we're moving on to Tier 2. Which of these questions would you like to pick next? All right. I'm just going to go in order this time. So let's do uh, 25 cents. All right. I'll let you take it off up here with tier two questions. Okay, yeah, let's let's do this. So, two A question. Twenty five cents. Where does this contamination show up in this image? Is it A, all healthy mycelium? B, contamination on the left side. C, contamination on the right side. Or D. You're effed because it's everywhere. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm all too familiar with the trichoderma. There we go. I don't, I don't want to curse myself. But, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to save my little tokens for when I need it. But I'm going to go B left side. B, left side. That is correct. You can take a look right. at all that nasty crap there on the left. Yeah, keep it's that one away. Of, one of PGT's tubs. A lot of people ask, can you cut that out? A lot of people want to cut cut around that. 
Um, in That's theory, you could, but it's most likely spread throughout the substrate. So if, even if you cut it out, it could just keep popping up. Yeah, that's like the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, so yeah, you can go for it, like but trichoderma, Gary. What's up? What's your experience like dealing with trichoderma? Well, my very first grow, I did really well with it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, so my experience is that here in Colorado, there's two bad seasons usually like april may when the temps start coming up it's very prevalent in the air and that's when we get a lot of our uh, you know early spring storms with the wind so it'll pick up the spores but what i do is i'll just ramp up my cleaning um, i'll do like a deep clean in my lab you know every week and then i bleach my floors every day that's what i've found to help the most and then usually it comes back again like uh, towards the end of summer or in the fall uh, when the temp I think it it comes out when there's like big temperature swings so that's my experience um, it's a there's a, a lot of ways to just like spot check for it especially when you're doing bags if you notice a uh, condensation coming up really early in an inoculation um, that's like a red flag for me. So I'll take those bags and kind of uh, quarantine them. And over a couple days, uh, usually you'll see a bunch of little sp spots on the bags. And then that is a trike bag. So I'll, I'll just compost those before it can get a chance to spread. Um, but it happens to everyone. And, you know, if you're a new grower, don't be discouraged. Um, but also just start small that's another reason is like contamination because if you do you know 40 tubs your first ever time and they all get contaminated that's gonna be like gut-wrenching compared to doing you know two bags of rice and like maybe you have 50 percent chance of success and that's right yeah so that is my experience is like every time you try to go big the trike monster will come and then it uh, it puts you back in your place, and it's it's just uh, it's inevitable, but it comes less and less the more experience you get with uh, with uh, you know aseptic technique, proper cleanliness, and it's also the time of year. So if you're a new grower, I recommend starting in like January because usually, at least in Colorado and know the east coast i don't know how florida is but um usually contamination is less in the winter because here the snow will will keep the ground covered and you know the colder temperatures will make it grow less so, yeah Sorry yeah i know long-winded answer but that's what i, I think uh, go ahead check your input again gary but just recently i posted on instagram so I keep trying to make my boomer shroomer inflatable monotub video all right she's she's been so grateful to me i've got tons of supplies to do it oh something always goes wrong and not nothing with the monotub it's just this time i used liners from trash bags that i got at our favorite dollar 25 tree and i didn't wipe down the bags with isopropyl alcohol and i think the trichoderma came from the dust and fecal flakes in those dollar tree garbage bags so there was no left or right side. The whole thing turned green in the incubation period after spawning. And nothing else failed like that. It was only where I used that nasty trash bag liner from the dollar store. So people who ask, should I wipe down my liners? I really think that was a root cause. It was just a dirty, even though it was fresh out of the container, Dollar Tree is just a weird place in general. Um, but also shout out to Michael Geeky for the dollar. We've got 58 people watching right now. So imagine if everybody tipped a dollar, that's $58 towards the Myco Game Show for future episodes. And um, I'm going to just throw it in there. The Discord link is in the description. We are now recruiting public contestants here after episode four. So if you want to get in and learn what's going on with becoming a contestant, that link is down in the description to join the Myco Game Show Discord. That's going to be so awesome. Uh, we're really excited for that. Uh, yeah, Michael Geeky says, pick me. Definitely going to have Michael Geeky on. 
Yeah, a lot of people have been wanting to come on as contestants, so yeah, the next episode is when we'll start bringing on our very first actual contestants, start winning actual game prizes. So we're very excited to, to bring that live to you guys, so definitely join the Discord server if you want to get tuned in to the Micro Game Show and come on as a contestant. Alright, yeah, so... I want to tier throw two. some hats up for, uh, for Oh yeah. Too. Yeah, Gary's going to be a sponsor for sure. Got some of those fresh hats on that he has. And lots of cool stuff that's going to be just coming on the way, so join the Micro Game Show Discord because there's so much to announce. It's hard to keep up on every social media, so like we're going to use the Discord as a main Myco Game Show hub, and then of course the other social medias like here, YouTube, and Myco Game Show on Instagram. Uh, well, Oz, not Oz. He said, "Paint your tubs black, then you solve two problems." But we all know that's not what a liner. It's not blocking the light. You need to block the microclimate, and painting your tub black doesn't do much. liner for side pins not for uh, for different reasons not for blacking it all right so tier two and you wanted to continue to go in order yeah, right gary do a do- all right. dollar <laughs> all right tier two dollar question let's see <clears throat> 2b question which of the following statements about yeast is correct a yeast is a mushroom b yeast is a fungus C, yeast is mold, or D, yeast is a secret agent spying on bread. <laughs> um, it's B, yeast is a fungus. B is correct. Now check out this fun fact, all right, from the article Mold versus Yeast from Biology Wise. Yeast and mold both are a type of fungus so for some people this might be trivial you know noob knowledge but some people might find it interesting yeast are unicellular cellular structures most yeast species reproduce asexually either by the formation of new organisms on the existing one by way of budding or by undergoing the reproductive process of binary fission where a single organism divides into two separate identical entities and then mold colonies and growths are clearly visible to the naked eye and are composed of multiple cells. So those people out there that love to bake bread and brew beer and stuff and make alcohol, it's crazy that it's just yeast and sugar. Power of fungi, Ooh, yeah. baby. Yeah, I just did a, a, a bunch of uh, microscopy videos on YouTube. One of my favorite things is to do like a germination a germ tube with a yeast. So if you put it in the nutrient broth, you can see them kind of like um, slide out. And it's just an interesting thing, you know, bust out the microscope and yeast are very rapid in their production. So you can almost watch it in real time. So yeah, it's like overnight. Scope, yeah, when you inoculate, you inoculate your agar plate and you see something pop up overnight, it could be most most likely it's like a form of yeast or other bacteria because it's so quick yep. and i know we it was it came up in the chat earlier uh somebody mentioned gary you have some of the best like scientific fungi videos and i'm sure we can all agree you've got like great breeding videos um the one project where you did um a few different breeding projects now so if you guys are into the deep scientific side of mycology, Gary does, he's got the best videos there. Well, I, I tip my hat to you guys too, because you guys make some really, really great videos and they're entertaining. And, you know, if you're looking for more um, entry level knowledge and bridging the gap between some of the more scientific things, then check out your channel. And um, I'm just going to keep doing my best to uh, do like, just observational science, I would say, and just figuring out the best way to grow mushrooms. And, you know, I think just a collaboration of everyone on YouTube is one of the best things of our time, and I'm super grateful to you know have that resource. So yeah, uh, we've brought it up before. Um, everybody kind of has their own unique style of personality and everything so it's like gary's got his videos i've got my way pgt has his videos 
so like everybody gets a little bit of a different taste of what's going on yeah we're all here just to promote mycology in general and get more people learning and getting into cultivation on their own and a lot of the resources here have been a big help to a lot of people along their journey yeah and i think a lot of people um the stuff so a lot of us go through we mentioned it earlier how youtube is going through striking everybody's mushroom videos from fresh from the farm fungi to me pgt mossy creek you know legitimate just farms trying to make awesome scientific videos and um something like this with the myco game show has been pretty safe so far but it's just ridiculous how you post a video about fruiting fruiting lion's mane or something and they go well that's narcotics production and abuse and it's striked and deleted like what didn't even watch the video yeah and then even after you dispute it usually it just doesn't doesn't happen no so, there's no yeah, yeah. The, the appeal is immediately rejected and they go yeah we reviewed it yeah right okay yeah, Michael Geeky in the chat just said more more than half my videos are demonetized now. Um, yeah, my whole channel was demonetized. I was able to go through like heavily edit everything. You know, it was it was a chore, and I was able to reapply to the partner program. So from now on, that's why I'm keep, I keep working on my Patreon. You can join the waitlist at Patreon.com/slash Ninety Second Mycology. Very close to launching, um, but. Cool. Tier two, we've got a dollar question. Should we hey, go let's for do it? it? Let's do it. <laughs> Should we do it? Let's do it. This is another obscure one because I know you're in Colorado, but <laughs> what is the official state fungi of Texas? Is it A, devil's cigar, B, yeehaw mushroom, C, leaping lizard cap, or D, Texafungus extraordinarius? <laughs> oh man well, uh, there's all my Texas people out there yeah well, uh, can I use my little chat token for this one sure yeah if you want to ask the chat yeah, I think I'm between A and C what does the chat think here George's in the chat said C um, Heidi last room said A Fresh right, off the next. cap said I would wager on devils, but I could be wrong. Oh man. We're... David Morris said A. Got a lot of A. A lot right. of C. Slinkadoo yep. said A. Yeah. Like God was telling me A, so I think I'm going with A, Devil Cigar. Alright. A, Devil Cigar, that is correct. Yes. Here's another fun fact, this, since this was pretty obscure, it's pretty interesting. So this is from the article, no, not Matthew McConaughey. This Texas fun guy is a rare mushroom. <laughs> so Devil Cigar, also goes by Texas Star, was officially designated the official state mushroom of Texas back on July 22nd, 2021. And this mushroom can be found only in Texas and part of Japan, so maybe we should get, get get out to these places and get some samples and see if we can domesticate this. But as the fruit body opening up and releasing the smoky cloud of spores, it, it's accompanied by a distinct hissing sound. So imagine all these mushrooms, if you were able to domesticate this hissing in your grow tent, you're like, what the hell is that? That'd be crazy. I love it. And you walk so in and there's a whole tent spot up in smokes and you're like, what the hell's going on here? Is like there a fire? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Very cool. All right, we're moving on to tier three, Gary. You got five dollars, right. ten dollars, and twenty dollars. Right. I think I did better that round, just going in order. So I'm just <laughs> gonna do for five. All right. Which religious group of people don't eat mushroom or any root vegetables? Is it A, Muslims, B, Buddhists, C, Jains, or D, Veggie Wizards? And... <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna say... Jeez. 
I'm an uninformed Catholic, so I have no idea. <laughs> um, Want to do a 50 50? Yeah, let's cut it to 50 50. Alright, let's go A Muslim. Muslims is incorrect, it's actually C James. Wow. So there's a fun fact. Out. From the article Jane Died by Priyanka from Pinky's Palette, Jane's believed to limit violence as much as possible. The extent of this limitation of violence in dietary practices includes that Jane should avoid consuming root vegetables. This is because root vegetables tend to have many more microorganisms which are killed when the plant is consumed. Also, consuming root vegetables involves killing an entire plant, not just taking one of its fruits or letting it naturally wither. Root vegetable restrictions include potatoes, onions, and mushrooms. Michael Kiki said James be weird like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. something I didn't know. That's very interesting. But, like, in a way, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, David Moore yeah. said, what the F is a Janes? See, it's you're learning about new stuff out there in the world. Yeah. Thanks for the tidbit on that one. Very interesting. Yep, so someone says they're of the Janes religions. Don't offer them any root vegetables. They'll probably get very offended. How many Janes at the market? I think they might avoid the market. Yeah. We have a special Janes shopping center to go to. <laughs> Do they eat meat? The Ten dollar question. Meat here. is violent. Here's a here's an yeah, interesting question for you. Uh, how much does a mushroom coffin cost in average? Is it A six hundred dollars? B fifteen hundred dollars? C forty five? C four thousand dollars or D priceless because it doesn't exist. Hmm. Top one. My wife has a friend in in Austin who's been actually working on some kind of a biodegradable coffin. I've seen seen you know some things pop up on the Facebook feed. I would say that. It exists. Uh, in rid of D. Uh, feel like <laughs> now it's just like the price point of coffin. So if I was a you know a businessman in the mushroom coffin world, I'd want to compete against you know cedar ones and stuff like that, but. Also, it's a new age thing, so I'm I'm gonna say C, four thousand. It's actually B, fifteen hundred. Oh. Well, they gotta up the price. <laughs> Here's a fun fact for you: the mushroom <laughs> coffin, an eco-friendly option for burial, by Susan Fraser from In the Light Arts. The mushroom coffin is a product of the Loop Biotech, a Netherlands company. Besides the cost benefit, the mushroom, the body in the mushroom coffin takes two to three years to decompose, comparing to the traditional casket of 10 to 20 years, so it's much more green. And their target customers are people who are environmentally concerned about their final impact on the environment, and they are likely educated and willing to accept new methods of burial. Oh, well, wonder if you can pick what uh, what type of mushroom, because carry me in some. Uh... I don't know. Mixture of uh, porcini and chanterelle. I feel like that would be a good combo. Uh, tip of the cap mushrooms. Tim in the chat said some Reddit vendor could do it cheaper. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll just smush some of my uh, old blocks together if someone's interested. But no, I've seen. Um, they also didn't we have a question on mushroom packaging in one of the earlier game shows? I think it's a certain species of mushroom that they use for this stuff because it it grows together so densely and for some reason they're able to just like dry it out and, and it just becomes like styrofoam almost and then it can just break back down into the earth. I don't mean, quote me on that. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. Something like that. Yeah, 
I would say when I die, just bury me in some street. <laughs> Horse poo. <laughs> Deer poo with the, the PGT logo. <laughs> Bury my asses with the substrate. There you go. Alpaca and deer poo. Yeah. Final meal is just a bunch of liquid culture and apps. Just chug a jar of liquid culture, a full quart. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like egg drop soup, slurping down pieces of mycelium. <laughs> I love it. All right, moving on to the twenty-dollar question here. What is the name of the ear infection caused by a fungus? Is it A, fungal otausia, B, otis externa, C, otomycosis, or D, chuckle ear syndrome? Man. I'm gonna say C, otomycosis. Correct. Fun fact, what is otomycosis, WebMD? It's the most common fungi that causes otomycosis are aspergillus and candida. Prevention of otomycosis that you can do at home. Wear a swim cap or earplugs when swimming. After swimming, dry your ears with a towel. Use a hair dryer on low setting to remove moisture from your ears. Don't put the hair dryer too close to your ears. And don't use cotton swabs or other objects to clean your ears as this can push earwax and debris further into your ear canal. Yeah, you know, that part about don't put the hair dryer too close to your ears, that's what I mean about common sense almost always prevailing. Yeah, I, I didn't even know that, that fungus could even get into your ear like that from swimming. Yeah, seems like fungus cause a lot of infections that we're just they're just like built into us <laughs> fresh off the cap said inoculating your ears that's right <laughs> <laughs> get a nice uh nice mycelium going towards the brain there we go <laughs> last of us all right 90 i'll let you take it out here with tier four for gary all right Finishing up with tier four. How do you feel? You need to take a break in intermission or anything, or you want to continue on with tier four? Let's do it. Okay, tier four. Want to go in order again? Fifty dollar question. Yeah, let's do fifty. I'll just work my way out. All right, here we go. What is the largest edible mushroom in the world? Is it a ter Termitomyces titanicus? B. Agaricus xanthodermis. C. Macrofungus colossalensis. Colossalensis. Yeah, I said that right. D. Giganticus maximus fungus. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good job coming up with those names because they all sound good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to say A. Hermitomyces. Titanicus, and that's the really deep one that goes into a termite. That, that is right? correct. A. So we have a fun fact here from the article. The world's largest edible mushroom lives in symbiosis with termites, and that's why it grows so huge. Now, real sh big shout out to Michael Geeky, $10 donation in between the fun facts right here. Thanks for the love, Geeky. Termitomyces titanicus, common name Chinglinglingu and Glulu. Why, why, <laughs> while the largest fungus in the world is one of the is is of the genus is <laughs> such the genus Arm Arm. Oh, I gotta calm down now. Armillaria termitomyces titanicus is the world's largest edible mushroom. Okay. This mushroom has a symbiotic relationship with termites and grow on their fecal matter. That's right, fecal flakes. It's our favorite. Breaking down plant material as food for them. The decayed mushroom tissue is another food source for the termites. One single cap is enough to feed the entire family. Now, I didn't know much about these, but if you look at those, it looks like either a, one of those parasol mushrooms or even like a death cap or an angel cap. 
but I assume it's huge, so you'd be able to tell the difference. Yeah, I've just seen a bunch of reels of people like pulling them out, and you think that it's gonna end, and it just keeps getting longer and longer. My yeah. question is like, how do they taste? Yeah, you know, I always bring this up to me. Mushrooms taste like mushrooms, whether it's Lion's Mane or anything else. Like, I really have to flavor it. Other, otherwise, everything just tastes the same to me. I think certain so, mushrooms have distinctive flavors, but they, they all kind of have a mushroomy taste to them. So, yeah, that was, that was cool that you knew that. Because I didn't know much about that one. All right, tier four, one hundred dollar question. Are we ready? Do it. All right. Pretty simple, for some people. But what receptors do psychedelics use in the brain? Is it a dopamine D two receptors, b norepinephrine alpha one receptors, c serotonin five HT two A receptors, or d acetyl acetylcholine muscarinic receptors uh, what's the common name for the termite one again <laughs> um fu chi ingulu ingulu <laughs> all right i'm gonna say c serotonin 5 e 2 a receptors that is correct all right so the fun fact about this, this is from receptor location matters for psychedelic drug effects by andy fell from uc davis health news in a recent paper written by researchers at the university of california they found that engaging serotonin 2a receptors inside neurons promotes growth of new connections so drugs such as LSD, MDMA, and psilocybin show great promise for treating a wide range of mental disorders that are characterized by a loss of neural connections. And we have a shout out to Edward who suggested this question. I believe uh, was it the last game show or a couple a little a little while back. So that's why um, people who are on SSRI, serotonin reuptake reuptake inhibitors for like anxiety and stuff. Um, that stuff messes with the way psychedelics interact with your brain because that medicine is already frying your serotonin receptors for you. All right, so this last one's an IOU because it's so expensive that we don't have the money on hand unless everybody donates to the Myco Game Show right now. So right now we owe you the last question. Approximately how long ago did the split occur between the lineage that included both fungi and animals and other eukaryotes while fungi and plants separated about 600 million million years ago so how long ago did the split occur between the lineage that included fungi and animals because fungi and plants are about 600 million years ago mm. so what could animals and fungi be how how, how long ago how ancient long time so fungi and plants separated 600 mi million years ago it's, like it's asking how far did fungi and animals yeah and it's like how do we know this as humans yeah. you know uh, like how do I'm we come up with these numbers Sometimes I feel like I'm still connected to a mushroom. <laughs> it's a... <laughs> hmm. You get an ear infection and you are connected to the mushroom. Yeah, I feel like they, they trained me. <laughs> um, Actually, the mushrooms use us to grow them. Like we don't yeah. make that choice. We've all been inoculated. Yeah, you just get that one experience, and then it's like part of it. I'm gonna say I'm going out on a guess here. A, 200 million years old. All right, final answer for the last question. Yep. A, 
Like I said, unfortunately, that's incorrect. I don't know how we know this, but apparently we have data that says one billion oh. years ago, fungi and animals separated. One billion. Maybe they reconnected again. So <laughs> I think, yeah, right here in 2023. Now, our fun fact with this is from the evolution of our fungi relatives by Duke University from fizz.org. The fossil evidence for fungi is practically non-existent. So to understand the evolution of fungi, scientists have to rely on molecular data, quote unquote, see they're like, yeah, you know, and compare the genetic relationships of various present day species to deduce, which might date back the furthest. So honestly, we don't know for sure. Until the early 90s, the molecular data showed that animals and fungi are each other's closest relatives and that they diverged after an earlier split that led to land plants. So when people think of like the images of evolution of a fish com like coming out of the water and walking and turning into a monkey, turning into a human. It started with a mushroom somewhere under the water, apparently. I'm just trying to wrap my brain around the, <laughs> around the, you know, mushrooms existing a billion years ago and that we as humans know that. I think they had something to do with um you know how they say the the first asteroids that hit earth must have carried that fungus so like they say well then fungi must survive in space i think somebody we said something about that a few shows back or somebody somewhere so fungus and amino acids the basis of life have just hit earth on these asteroids billions of years ago and that's just you know a theory that's out there but spores are pretty amazing. And just keeping a spore syringe or a spore print around and then starting them off a decade later. Yeah. I think that if there was anything that could come from another world, it would be a mushroom spore. And I think a lot of people always have the question of, oh, can I use dried mushrooms to start a grow? And everybody says no until they've done it, and they go, well, I thought this was dead, but sure enough, it always will rehydrate on that agar plate and yeah. start growing new mycelium. And there can be benefits to that, too, because <clears throat> if you have a dried fruiting body, the water activity is going to be less than three, which means that um, the, the water that is in the cells will be less than the amount to maintain viable like bacteria or other contaminants so it could be a way to like cleanse that mushroom from any contaminants and then um, if you crack that middle open where it's sterile then you have maybe a higher chance of getting a clean mushroom so if you're out in the woods or you know on a extravagant adventure and you find this mushroom take spore print dry out the rest of the mushroom and then um, maybe you'll be able to clone it later at home or something but yeah that's similar to uh, you have videos on using water agar yep. um so yeah without you know with water and no nutrition you kind of get some growth and you don't feed the contaminants so yeah without that water inside that mushroom it's contamination mm -hmm. had nothing to feed on um yep. but a big shout out to corson just tipped donated one dollar to the micro game show that is amazing um, 55 people watching now. Imagine if you all donated one dollar. It goes a long way. And that link is at the top of the description. Everybody's links are in the description of this video right now. Um, the most important one, uh, besides Gary's book link, is the Discord link for the Myco Game Show. We are opening up the option for contestants to join. So, in order to learn how to do that, join the Myco Game Game Show Discord. Um, Shout fresh out, off, fresh the, off cap. the cap, three dollars. Awesome, guys. Uh, this was a lot of fun. So what we want to do next is maybe take a little break and come back and do a Q and A with Gary, because I know there's some people that would probably have some great questions for him. Um, Thank you. That was super fun. But yeah, you want to take a little break, and um, it's up to you. Or if you want to keep going, we can go right into it. Um, let me uh. I got a wine glass here I can fill. Oh. And I'll be right back. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's do a little intermission then. Yeah, That'll be great. Intermission break, and we'll be back for a Q and A.
And we're back, guys. We're here with Gary from Fresh From The Farm Fun Guy. We're gonna kick it with the chat a little bit and do a little Q&A for you guys. If you guys have any questions for Gary, 90, or me, feel free to shoot them out in the chat and uh, we'll be happy to talk with you guys. Yep, so um, if you weren't here for the whole beginning of the show, uh, we already finished the game show, but lots of things in, this, in the description of this video, the Myco Game Show Discord link. Um, you can join the Discord, and we are starting to recruit public contestants. And we have all of Gary's links in, in the description. We talked about his ebook earlier. A lot of people are interested in that. They want to start gourmet mushroom farms. Um, oh, my Patreon link is down there as well. A lot of people want to know. You're still on the wait list. Like, I'm really close to launching it. You know, I'm a perfectionist, so I just have to make sure that everything's good to go. George um, for tipping us twenty dollars. Thank you. Oh so yeah, much, George. George. Now what's this? Juco said, "Have y'all seen the merch for Crime Pays, but Botany doesn't? He has a hoodie that says Crime Pays, but Mycology doesn't. I want it bad. No, I've never seen that. I love mushroom shirt. So thanks for that. Check it out." What about you guys? You you got merch up? Yeah, so my merch is still... If you go to 90secondmycology.com slash merch, what I'm doing is I'm going to redo all of that with some new stuff because I'm just due for an overhaul. Like, that was just simple stuff I threw together. It's actually kind of mediocre and funny to look back on, but people still like it, you know, who want to support me. It's, it's silly stuff to buy. But I'm going to redo all that with proper logos and stuff. Yeah, I have oh, PGT, your website. shop is open, isn't it, right now? Yep, my shop is open. It's at pgtmycology.com. If you guys are interested, I have some cool t-shirts on there available, as well as uh, collectible mushroom trading cards. If you're interested in doing some research on some trading cards, that, you know, you definitely pick up some trading cards for yourself. You definitely will be glad you did. Um, PGT does not disappoint when it comes to the trading cards, so you're on the fence about getting the cards i highly suggest getting them you'll be very glad you did fresh off the cap said gary question if you could go back in time and talk to yourself at the beginning of your mushroom journey what would you say that's a tough one just keep doing it and uh don't get discouraged and um I mean, there's definitely, it tests your uh, patience a lot. Like, I remember one time, I almost called it early on because I was uh, I was in my basement and I had these, like, plastic totes that I stacked on a shelf to be my reservoir for my humidifier. And, um... Oh, man. <laughs> the, sh the shelf, like, started giving out and oh. all the water just went everywhere in my basement so I ran and got a shot back and I was just vacuuming up water and I'm like oh my god what did I just do and then the next day I went to Home Depot and I bought a 55 gallon garbage can with casters I'm like why didn't I do this before <laughs> so it was like a lot of failure by just you know situational and um, you know, I never took out a loan or anything it's just been bootstrapped since the beginning so early on for me, it was a lot of uh, like use what you have. And um, I was lucky that I collected a bunch of equipment over the years. So I would go like when labs were closing, I would scoop up an incubator or uh, C College, uh, CU Denver always has in uh, June, like they overhaul their labs. So they have a huge auction every year. So if you're, check out your, you know, university and figure out what you can buy at a discount. And then you have more money to um, do experiments, which leads to more answers, I guess. So a long time in the beginning, I was just growing straight on sawdust as my spawn. And then I would buy like these little, um, like baggies from uh, Walmart, stuff them with sawdust, put steaming hot water in it to 
to quickly pasteurize it. And then I was using those for a few weeks. And then um, I met my friend Zach and really dove into the grain spawn aspect. But if I hadn't tried that other method, I feel like I wouldn't have like learned about grain spawn or I don't know. I just uh, I learned a lot from failure by just experimenting with what I had. But nowadays there's tons of resources on YouTube, so I could have easily just gotten lost in like research. And I'm glad that I just did it. So that's what I would tell myself is like, if you think something might work, just try it. Just try it once. And then also don't get discouraged when it doesn't work. But if it does work, then, you know, it leads to improvements over time. Yeah. Oh, Gary, go ahead. Check your mic again. Um, And while you're doing that, George asked, what is your favorite gourmet mushroom to cultivate and your favorite to eat? All right. I was swapping my mic. What what happened? Oh, uh, George asked, what is your favorite gourmet mushroom to cultivate and your favorite to eat? I love growing lion's mane. Um, That's my number one. I would say probably like 60% 60% of my yields are lion's mane. It's fun because it's very consistent. It can handle a lot. So like right now, it's probably like 68, 70 down there and it grows and then it can get down to the 40s and it'll grow. A lot of mushrooms will do that, but lion's mane is, you know, one of the top tier for me. And then for eating, that kind of just varies throughout throughout the season for me um we just did like a really nice mushroom lasagna yesterday and oh, i yeah. used uh porcini i used uh morels and shiitake and diced them up really fine and then did a red sauce with that um that's- well speaking of the morels so david yeah. morris asked two times now gary how did the morels turn out oh so I haven't had any fruit yet, <laughs> so that's, that's, the, that's the real answer, but I've had some pin, and then they stalled out. I had some really nice uh, Nidia form, and then it dries out, so my biggest problem is moisture. Um, I'm going to scale up my little hoop houses this year. Uh, someone told me that they died out because of our chlorinated water when I was in Denver, but now I just invested in this ridiculous like filtration system I'm pretty excited about. Um, so there's zero chance of like any water contaminant. Uh, I'm going to try that. You may, maybe that will help. I've got some really nice green spawn that I have prepped and it's like nice and thick and uh, brown and Sclerotia. Uh, I have it primed. I'm gonna try like three different timed batches. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying everything. Just like what I said before is like, I'm, I'm not gonna to... get discouraged. Are you I'm doing not gonna anything get to reproduce the yep. symbiotic relationship for them? Uh, yeah. So I have a couple uh, cottonwood trees that I'm growing with morels planted in them. Um, one of my dreams is to get uh, my plant issue culture lab going again and then uh, sterilely, you know, uh, propagate trees and then inject them with uh, like uh, symbiotic mycelium like porcini and morels and chanterelles. Um, that's like a, a long term project though, like 30 years maybe because. It's gonna, you're gonna have to grow out the trees and the mycelium, and then also it just has to be the right spot. Um, but I have, I know, um, a guy from New Zealand, um, Oaken Spore, he has been doing that for a while where he's trying to do like truffles and oak trees. Um, so I've tried it a bunch of times, but haven't had any fruits yet um george 
in the chat asked i specifically want to grow lion's mane but don't want to do it in bags to reduce my carbon footprint do you have any texts that involve reusable containers yeah i've seen personally i've seen lion's mane um, on top of the mushroom bottles too sometimes even though the yield's a lot smaller you can do the quart jars or mushroom bottles for lion's mane as well the bottle tax um there's buckets so you can do like the five gallon buckets you can do um inside of like a even bins like a like a monotub but it's gonna be like a, a thick mat it won't be a, a nice like fruit um also just totems like you could do uh like logs and then eventually those will just break down And yeah, Slinkadoo said, I've seen biodegradable bags, but they're a lot pricier. Uh, yeah, not by much. A lot of people yeah. use them, and they're great. We, we use biodegradable bags. The problem is that you can't buy them in bulk because, or you can if you're producing a lot of mushrooms. So you have to know your production and buy them within like a six-month uh, window because they will start to break down yeah. when you order them. And then if you don't use them fast enough then you'll have waste wasted bags so i would say that they're pretty similar in price but you have to be like dialed in to get the right amount yeah lots of different techs out there like you don't have to stick with what you see all the time um oh first name last name said where's the games uh you're about uh, an hour two yeah an hour and a half late we finished the game show. This is the Q&A section right now. Um, I'm going to make a note of that. We should have a Q&A screen so that people know what we're on. Um, but yeah, so everybody who's here, it's a Q&A right now. Any questions you have for us? Now's the time to ask. Otherwise, we could be close to the end of the fourth episode of the Myco Game Show, which was a huge success. Uh, first name, last name, no, no problem. Said my bad. It's all good. Just letting everybody know. You can always rewatch it after the live show ends here. It'll have a recorded session of it on the YouTube, so you can just go back and tune in if you want to check out the, the game show portion of the, the episode. Jukul asks, you got any good recipes for chestnut mushrooms, Gary? Yep, so we usually will roast those with veggies. Um, I'll, I really like doing like a balsamic glaze. So we'll roast it in the oven for like 365 to 400 for like 15 minutes until they get pretty crispy. And then... Um, at that point, you could just eat them, or I'll take them onto a skillet and then do some balsamic, and it soaks it in there. Uh, that's that's my favorite way. But um, we've also done like you can mix it in with some ground beef and make a chestnut burger. That's really good. Um, but yeah, I like the the texture on the stem with those. So we like to just roast them with other veggies, uh, carrots and green beans or something. Yeah, I think the easiest way, if people don't know, um, you know, any good mushroom recipes, you can't go wrong with the saute in the pan with the butter and garlic, or just throw them into a soup, you know. Yep. Um, we had Ian Garcia said thoughts on oven tech. It depends on what your, if you mean oven tech for substrate, it works. Uh, oven tech with jars. Most glass jars really aren't rated for that dry heat and oven tech trying to sterilize jars can end up cracking them pretty easily if you have cheap jars. Um, George said 90 second mycology, when did you first get into cultivating? I've told the story before, but it was around 2014, 2015 when I first found, started doing some research on it and I found those Mark R. Keefe, let's grow mushroom videos um, with the brown rice flour just steaming on the pot, no pressure cooker, and then the in vitro fruiting from those jars with a little bag over the top. And then I didn't do it again until like 2019, 2018, 2019, right when I started the channel, when I was just in the kitchen and Uncle Ben was taking off. 
on my channel i have a live stream playlist and one of the live streams i did was a solo live stream about the history of indoor magic mushroom cultivation so it starts from maria sabina in mexico all the way up until the uncle ben tech and i was just getting into the uncle ben tech and i went this is so easy i would love to be able to show people how easy it really is to grow mushrooms you know the kind of mushrooms i want which is most the psychedelic ones right now and I just saw that that 90 logo and I was like the, the little microwave 90 on it and I'm like that's it 90 second mycology and then it was born and that's it and we're here now so <laughs> Jeremy Jetson asks uh, what's the best place for gourmet genetics to get started what do you think Gary maybe Gary's Etsy shop yeah, that'd we, be pretty great we've got a uh, fresh bun guy on Etsy um, link in the description yeah, check that out. I'm gonna be restocking my uh, a new 12 foot trailer for uh, that's converted into a walk-in soon. So my goal is to double my genetics. Um, you know, it's tough to maintain them all, but I've been growing about 16 different varieties. So all of those are listed on my Etsy. I do a lot of breeding, so every winter I'll take my weakest strain and run it through the gambit and sometimes I get some good ones so I love my uh, my pink oyster variety the uh, uh, Niagara Falls lion's mane which is my lion's mane on there that was gifted to me by my mentor and I've been keeping that in mother culture for six years and then also uh, my my Piapino I did a few different breedings on that and uh, the current one that's up there really nice uh, good canopy i would say those are my top three but there's you know tons of good strains on there um so back to the oven tech real quick ian garcia said i meant for inoculation slash flow hood work um oh, i just was on the bad. podcast <laughs> i was i was in the pod um what was i'm gonna try to say did a show with michael geeky and microdex it was two weeks ago now and that's all he uses is oven tech with great success so i think haven't you you've spoke about oven tech before gary did you ever try that where you you have the oven cracked open and you're working over the hot air that's blowing up yeah i think that it's not very comfortable um so if you're doing like three petri dishes then go for it but if you're doing that as like your main uh, workflow gonna get uncomfortable and you know i would rather just do it in a still air box to be honest or clean your bathroom really good and do it in the shower it's gonna have similar results and you're not gonna be like wetting and bent over <laughs> like i don't know it could it could work but you know 150 years ago people would just light a candle and work the flame because it creates convection so that is just as you know I would say just as useful as oven tech, except you don't have to be bent over. But I don't know. That's just my opinion. I have a flow hood, uh, I, and that's what I prefer. But starting out, I would say still air box is a better progression to a flow hood than oven tech. Um, what do you, what well, do you guys think? Well, go ahead, fix your mic. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> But I personally have never messed with the oven tech. I still just use that that stupid little unmodified still air box I hang over my counter because uh, everything I do right now is still just hobbyist mushroom creation work for videos and just having fun. So if I was doing, if I was going to move into commercial cultivation with gourmet stuff or anything else, I would just go on and get the flow hood. Yeah, I, I, I tend to just stick to still air box or flow hood. Um, oven tech does work when you kind of need it to however i've had a bad experience of accidentally dropping something into the oven and then it started melting and then i started panicking so that's kind of oh, why yeah, that's, that's kind of why I, I i avoided the the oven tech going forward yeah i feel like we've all tried it and then moved on um we had a question from Cyber, any advice for setting up slash getting into microscopy? I want a microscope from Fresh Air Exchange and about to start playing with that. 
yeah so you're gonna want to learn about the maintenance of your microscope <clears throat> before you even look at anything under it because you can ruin your microscope especially if it has an oil immersion lens uh, without knowing so I would, I did a whole series on that. I would recommend watching those. I don't know if you guys have microscopy videos, but um, no, I would check out I don't. more. Yeah, um, I would check out some videos on it first, and then uh, just you know make a bunch of slides, like do some gills, and then do some pore solutions, uh, do some really thin cut tissue, and just look at it. Uh, you're gonna want probably some stains. So, uh, actophenol cotton blue is a good one. Uh, gram stains are good. Iodine, um, even bromothymol blue. That's what I used in my video. So, get some stain. And then, uh, yeah, and just uh, be careful. You know, uh, microscopes can be really sensitive. So, uh, just take good care of it. And I recommend, you know, basic model, at least an AM scope. Uh, don't get like one of the play ones from Toys R Us or something because you're not going to be able to see anything. But at least get a decent microscope, like a couple hundred dollars. Like I said, go to one of those university uh, garage sales basically at the end of the semester and you can get a really nice one for, you know, a couple hundred. Yeah, stir plates too. A lot of people want to get stir plates and hot plates. Mm -hmm. um, some of the universities, I guess what I tried doing was just uh, university, what's it called? The university is a resale or university overstock or something. Just a simple Google search like that to get you started. All right, so any, anything else going on in the chat here tonight? Let's see. Javier asks, can I inoculate a supplemented wood pellet with lion's mane liquid culture rather than inoculating grain first and then spawning to wood pellet block? We've done this question with Gary before. I remember, I don't know if it was a live stream with on my channel or we were, I don't remember. Um, I think Gary has done this test of going yeah. LC straight to substrate. Yeah, so my feelings are that and you know, evidence shows that it does work. But what happens is it creates a, a space bottleneck within your grow. So let's say that you, you do one batch of 20 bags, like five pound bags of liquid culture. And then unless you're doing a really big inoculate, like a, a larger volume of inoculant, it's gonna take longer colonized so then you're gonna have a whole shelf of these uncolonized bags and then the next week you would um, you know do the same thing over and over again until you have a big backlog of uncolonized bags so in Denver you know space is expensive so it makes more sense to do it in little either you know I use a four pound spawn bags now but I used to use half pint jars as like a safe space, uh, a space saver. So I think that it would work, but it eats up a lot of space. Uh, we had a question here from Ian Garcia. Um, asked about the oven tech earlier, but Ian said, just became part of hashtag bag life today. Said, um, or asked, I should wait to put the rubber band on it till it's ready for fruiting, correct? And also, will cutting the bag be necessary to fruit, or should I just let it be? So that really depends on, number one, the type of filter on your bag. If you have a tea filter um, and you're growing cubensis, maybe they'll fruit in the tea filter. Otherwise, you're going to want an A or B filter to fruit without cutting anything. Um, the rubber band, yeah, goes on when it's fully colonized, ready to fruit. I've got a couple bag fruiting videos now on my channel. Um, Gary has a bunch, obviously, with some gourmet mushrooms like Piopinos and um, Enoki, I think you did too. So it's really just, it depends on the, the type of bag and the type of mushroom that you're growing. Just keep doing some research, and once you get closer to that step, you'll, you'll know what to do. Yo, he said 14A. 
Yeah, 14A, you might get away with not cutting, having to cut it open, but you just it just depends. Yeah, I think genetics plays a big role, too. Nowadays, people are trying to select for almost like a top fruiting mushroom in those conditions. So, you know, there's a lot of vendors out there, and you guys probably have grains that will grow better in that condition. So just uh, get the right genetics, too. Yeah, genetics. Uh, David Morris said, I got the best stir plates, and they do four at a time. They heat individually, digital. And then he said, they said, it won't let me send pics on here. That's correct, because it's YouTube chat. But you can always go to the Myco Game Show Discord server, chat, hang out with everybody, send some pictures in the chat, and it's also going to be open to public contestants soon. Oh, Silly Cyburn gave an update. So this microscope is an Omax, and it does have at least one oil lens, so thanks for that. I'll definitely do some research first. Yep, just, uh, just make sure that you uh, at least, you know, have an understanding of how to take care of the lenses, because those are the most important part. So just uh, make sure you get the right, like, Kim wipes are important, um, and the right cleaners, and just have everything ready before you even look at it. Fresh off the cap asked, Gary, who is your mushroom shirt plug? I need to find that shirt. That is a nice oh. shirt. Where'd it come from? Uh, it's, uh, it was from Florida, actually. So we went on vacation, um, and it was made by a company that recycles linens. Oh. My mother-in-law got it for me for my birthday, so... I, I can't even tell you, but it was from, it was a Florida shirt. We were down in uh, New Smyrna Beach a couple of oh, yeah. uh, springs ago. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yep. Yeah, it's it's a cool spot down there, but um, yeah. So sorry, I can't help you, but definitely check out, I got to get a, a PGT shirt with the little antlers and then the 90 second classic. And I've got hats. We just we are selling so many hats lately. I should have just just switched to selling hats. But anyway, we got people love these hats. Yeah. yeah, go check out our Etsy. We got some like hats. this hat. It's that trucker style with the mesh in the back and you know the the yep. flat flat front. You know, people just love all these different style hats. Ian wanted to know, Gary, are you familiar with? Michael Vora, they're based in Colorado, and I received some great LC from them when I was out there. Never heard of them, but I, uh, I'll have to look them up. What what strain did you get, or what kind of LC? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, what kind of mushroom was it? <clears throat> so, it seems like we're kind of nearing the end of the show, the end of the chat here, kind of dwindling down. What do you think, PGT? I think we had an awesome show. There was a lot of participants in the chat. Everyone had some great questions. We got to learn a lot about gourmet mushrooms today. I think it's scary. Yeah, lots of great stuff. Um, I appreciate you guys putting this together, and I also learned a lot, so I'm excited to keep watching. And Yeah, just uh, love what you guys do, and I love the mushroom fam, so thank you. Yeah, any last minute plugs? So let's go through the links. We've got the donation link for this live stream stays up. It just because you're watching this later and it's not live, you can still use that Streamlabs Micro Game Show donation link down in the description. It's the first link there at the top. Um, the second most important link, again besides Gary's Etsy shop, is the Micro Game Show Discord, which is where all the news is going to be. How to become a contestant. Our next show is going to have public contestants so it could be one of you in the chat right now it could be somebody watching later it could be michael geeky who's going to definitely want to be on who mentioned earlier wants to get on uh, the link to my patreon waitlist pgt's launched patreon and of course not just gary's etsy shop but gary's youtube channel awesome scientific mushroom videos 
Gary's website, freshfromthefarmfungi.com, and the direct link to Gary's ebook on the Etsy shop. Very interesting book. If you want to get into gourmet mushroom growing, is right there. And other than that, I would say stay excited for the Micro Game Show. Keep liking, keep sharing, get the algorithms going, the analytics, everything. Share it, share it with everybody, you know. Keep it going. Because if we just all keep having fun with it, then it'll go somewhere. Don't and it's going somewhere to, already. Don't forget to inoculate the like button on the video. Yeah, that's right. That definitely helps with the algorithms and helps get the <laughs> show promoted out. So yeah, I think that's it. Gary, any last words? Uh, I just want to thank you guys again for your time. And that was an awesome experience. And I'm, I'm looking forward to more Myco Game Show in the future and more videos coming from you guys. More live uh, streams we got to do, more podcasts. It's oh, awesome yeah. to just hang it's out, hang out combo. live. Yeah, Absolutely. it's awesome. All right, much love, everyone. All right, guys, we will see you in the next episode of the Michael Game Show. Don't be late, all right? Don't show up during Q&A. Even if you do, it's all right. You can rewatch it later. But it's always fun to be here live because we do it live. Yeah, big thank you to everyone that donated and big thank you for tuning in to the Michael Game Show and to help make this, uh, you know, a reality. All right, guys, I wish you guys a good night and uh, we'll see you around for the next game show. Right. Goodbye, everybody.